Well, good morning. I hope you're all having a really good day. Today, I wanted to talk with you just for a few minutes about the, the Psalms. Did you know that one third of the Psalms in the Bible are what we call lament Psalms? A lament Psalm is one in which the psalmist is hurting over something that's happening in his life and he questions God very openly and very honestly. And when you read those lament Psalms, it almost shocks you to hear someone speak to God like that. But then usually towards the end of the psalm, the psalmist will make a turn and he'll reiterate his faith and his love for God. So let me just read you one example. It's from Psalm 13. How long, Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long must I wrestle with my thoughts and day after day have sorrow in my heart? How long will my enemy triumph over me? Look on me and answer, Lord my God. Give light to my eyes or I will sleep in death. And my enemy will say, I have overcome him, and my foes will rejoice when I fall. But here's where he makes the turn in verse 5. But I trust in your unfailing love. My heart rejoices in your salvation. I will sing the Lord's praise, for he has been good to me. You know, right now, there are a lot of people in this world who are hurting because of this pandemic. People who are sick or who have a loved one who is sick and they can't even be with them. A lot of people who have lost a loved one. To this virus and they are deep in grief. People who are asking God why and asking God how long and there are no good answers. These lament psalms speak for them. Last week I ran across a eulogy that Jonathan Evans gave at his mother Lois Evans funeral. Lois Evans was the wife of Tony Evans, a well-known Dallas preacher and author. Lois passed away December the 30th of last year after a long battle with cancer. And at her service, Jonathan spoke very honestly of how he wrestled in prayer with God over her death. So I'd like to read from his eulogy. To me, it's very touching and it's very applicable to all the prayers of lament being offered during this pandemic. This is what Jonathan wrote. I was wrestling with God because I said, if we have victory in your name, didn't you hear us when we were praying? Didn't you see the cancer? Didn't you hear us? Why didn't you do what we were asking of you? Because your word says if we abide in you and your word abides in us, we can ask whatever we will and it will be given to us. Your word tells us that if we ask according to your will that you hear us. Your word is telling us in Mark 11 that if you pray believing, you will receive. To be anxious for nothing, but through prayer and supplication, make your request known. Where are you? I was wrestling with God the last few days because this was a great opportunity that we can tangibly see your glory. Every, everyone, everybody was praying, not only in Dallas, but around the country and around the world. People were watching. Where are you? This was an opportunity to see your glory. And as I was wrestling with God, it's as if he answered and he said, number one, you don't understand the nature of my victory because just because I didn't answer your prayer your way doesn't mean that I haven't already answered your prayer anyway, because victory was already given to your mom. You don't understand because of the victory that I've given you. There was always only two answers to your prayers. Either she was going to be healed or she was going to be healed. Either she was going to live or she was going to live. Either she was going to be with family or she was going to be with family. Either she was going to be well taken care of or she was going to be well taken care of. Victory belongs to me because what of what I've already done for you. The two answers to your prayer are yes and yes, because victory belongs to Jesus. And then as if he said to me, you need to understand that I am God and I am sovereign. And my game plan is bigger than any one player on the field. So you need to trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on you, but lean on me because I have the ability to make this crooked situation straight. I am the sovereign God. That's why they say that I am that I am. As high as higher as the heavens are above the earth are my ways from your ways and my thoughts from your thoughts. We don't think the same. P.S. Don't tell me how to get my glory. And finally, he just let me know. I appreciate your prayers and your trust in me, but the way that you are coming to me now is a sense of entitlement like I owe you something. You can't tell me what I'm supposed to do. I'm God. You can't say, well, it should have been this way. You can't tell me, well, as much as she served you, you should have done it this way. 
as much as my dad has done in ministry and as much as we've done in ministry and how faithful this family is, it should be this way. Don't come to me with that entitlement because without my victory and what I have done, all of you would be on the doorsteps of hell. I don't owe you anything. You owe me everything. And I know that it was hard for you to sit there and watch your mom die, but don't let that belittle the fact of how hard it was for me to watch my son die so she could live. So back up off me with your entitlement. There were always two answers to your question. Yes and yes, because of my grace being sufficient. Thank you, Lord. We know that God does answer every prayer. We know he is a big God and he can handle our struggles and our laments and our why and our how long questions. He is sovereign. He knows what he's doing. We can trust him. We don't ever have to be afraid. If we get this virus and if we get well, we win. But if we get this virus and we die, we win. If this virus goes away quickly, we win. If it hangs around for years, we win because we belong to him. We've read the end of the book and we know we win. So let's trust him. Let's pray. Father, we are so thankful that you are such a great God, that you can handle it, Father, when we struggle, when we question, when we doubt. That, Father, you still love us. You're patient with us. Father, we admit we don't understand your ways. We admit we, we don't know why this virus is attacking us. Father, we want it to go away. But, Father, we do trust you. We know you are sovereign, that you are in control. So, Father, help us to put all of our faith in you, Lord. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for giving us your son, Jesus. We pray this in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. So thank you again for listening today. And if you do have any prayers or any needs that we can help you with, I hope that you'll let us know. So God bless you. We love you. Thank you.